Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the second of our 2020 webinar series. Uh, this one's titled Video Caching Best Practices. We've got an awesome panel uh, of really smart guys who know a lot about caching. And uh, we thought this would be a really cool webinar topic, uh, you know, especially as, uh, you know, one of the working groups within the Streaming Video Alliance is open caching. Um, so we're obviously doing a lot there. And there was a huge announcement uh, made by Viasat uh, with a commercial implementation of those specifications. So we're hoping that you really get a lot out of this and then you find some things, you know, maybe you didn't know or hadn't tried yet from, you know, from these excellent panelists. So a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, this webinar is brought to you by the Streaming Video Alliance. Uh, I am Jason Tebow, the executive director of that organization. And if you don't know what the SVA does, uh, we're really, you know, a global tr technical association. Uh, we bring in member companies from across the video ecosystem and around the world to help solve critical technical challenges uh, to help deliver the best possible viewing experience at scale, right? So we have lots of working groups, uh, lots of different topics, lots of different projects uh, to come and contribute. So if you want more information, the website's at the bottom of the slide. Just take a look over there, download some docs, uh, read about it, and then uh, if you got questions, just shoot them to me. All right, uh, this webinar is being recorded, so we will post it on the SBA website uh, probably a little bit later this afternoon, but then um, other people, you'll also get an email from uh, GoToWebinar with a link uh, to their download version in case you want to watch it later or pass it around. So we'll be socializing this quite a bit in case you've got friends or colleagues who, who are unable to attend and, and still want to you know, listen to the webinar and learn about uh, some video caching best practices. So for now, let's start out with some panelist introductions. Uh, we'll begin with Eric. Uh, take it away. Thanks, JT. Uh, I'm Eric Klein. I am a Director of Content Delivery over at uh, Disney Streaming Services, focusing on our technology uh, management and the operations of things that we do with uh, all things around caching. Um, in addition, I work with Yoav as the co-chair of the Open Caching Working Group as part of the Streaming Video Alliance, where we're focusing on um, additional approaches to caching in the environment and ecosystem, as well as interoperability amongst existing uh, CDN infrastructure and ecosystems, uh, as well as uh, internet service provider uh, deployed open caches and caching environments as a whole. Very cool. All right, Yoav. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Yoav Gressel. I'm uh, the VP of R&D at Quilt. Uh, at Quilt, we actually developed uh, open caching solutions and uh, deploy them in different uh, service providers uh, around the globe. And as uh, Eric uh, stated, uh, Eric and myself co-chair the streaming, uh, the open caching uh, working group in the Streaming Video Alliance. Guess Very that's cool. all. Thanks, for... <laughs> yeah. thanks Joab. And uh, Sanjay. Uh, thanks, JT. Um, my name is Sanjay Mishra, and I'm an associate fellow in the Network Infrastructure Planning Group within Verizon. And uh, I'm focusing on uh, primarily on the caching-related infrastructure. Uh, and with respect to Streaming Video Alliance, I'm also a co-chair of the Virtual Reality Study Group. Um, back to you, JT. Thanks, Sanjay. No, it's great. I mean, obviously, again, sort of <laughs> super smart technology guys, uh, you know, when it comes to streaming and caching and delivery and network architecture. So should be a really great panel. Um, the first thing I want to start off with question-wise is really just kind of to set some baseline. Um, I know that, you know, people toss out the word caching and caching services and caching service in a lot of different ways. So, you know, maybe, Eric, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, just kind of give us your, you know, definition of, you know, what is a caching server and how does it work? Sure. So relatively high level, uh, kind of put it into the context that we have video caching best practices is our key. Put it in the context of video delivery. Um, when you're streaming video, for distribution, you're handling a lot of small files that are, are meant to be delivered, a couple megabytes in size, um, all across the globe. And in order to do so, you can't just stream all of that off of a single dedicated point or a single dedicated origin and ensure that all the different customers can gain access to that type of content. So what you need to do is leverage caching services, caching servers, the caching ecosystem as a whole, whether it be CDNs, whether it be open caching networks, um, uh, different deployment options to bring the content closer to the user. So effectively, you're taking the sourced content, the original content that you've created, 
effectively distributing multiple different copies in different regions and locations. Now, how you get it out there and, and how they're, they're placed from a caching standpoint, traditionally we deal with more of a passive caching approach where a request will trigger the object to be cached further upstream um, into caching ecosystems. But at the end of the day, it's just it's a bunch of servers with a ton of space and ton of a ton of disk optimized for memory and optimized for delivery of objects off of varied locations throughout the globe. Uh, Yo, ever Sanjay, you guys want to add anything to that? Um, I, I I agree with uh, what uh, Eric just described. So it, it's it's a lot of. Uh, uh, repeated content which is out there and then you've got to have a way that you can hold that content um so so what eric says i agree with you know that makes sense yes it's uh it's correct and and when when you look at the caches you can look at the the single cache this is a single server and look at a, a more a solution whether caches that reside uh, together in a certain uh, point of presence and act as a, a collective uh, in order to serve large amount of uh, content and larger and high capacity. Okay. Yeah, that's actually, it's actually a great point you have. So caches aren't independent, right? That's the one thing to think about as well. When you cache an object, it's not just a server to a uh, centralized server distribution model, it, it, it's part of a larger network that you're looking to cache objects a part of. So it's everything's kind of um, connected in a shape, one way, shape, or form. So when you're engaging with a caching service, you're not just engaging with a single server that can cache your object closer to an end user, but in fact, an entire ecosystem that might be able to distribute the content closer to millions of specific users in a different market. No, that's very cool. And I, and I know there are lots of caching servers out there right so i know that there's you know nginx both the oss and the license version there's varnish there's squid there's obviously commercial caches and commercial implementation like you know what quilt creates and you know that that's it seems to me that there's a lot of of options out there for companies but i you know i guess one of the things that's interesting you know to me and i think would be interesting to the audience is understanding like no matter what cache you use no matter what caching server you implement across your infrastructure or no matter what caching servers being used by the service provider you're employing you kind of want to be able to measure it right you want to be able to measure like how how efficient or effective is my cache and you know i know from my cdn days at limelight one of those big things was the cache hit ratio right so how often you know did the request have to go back to origin when the object wasn't in cache, but you know, maybe yo out, maybe you can uh, you can start us off with an answer to this question. You know, besides cache hit ratio, or maybe that is it. What are some of the data points to collect from a cache? You know, which can sort of help measure its effectiveness and optimization. Yes, yeah, so, so you're correct. One of the major ones is uh, actually uh, the cat hit, cache hit ratio uh, to really understand the efficiency of uh, of this cache. Uh, or group of caches, uh, but that can be uh, basically uh, measured both in a transaction uh, manner uh, as a hit ratio and as a, a cash out versus cash in uh, ratio in terms of uh, bandwidth, uh, really to understand the, the efficiency because not every transaction, uh, all not all transactions are are equal, um, and in addition uh, for that really uh, in general uh, really the, the understanding the bandwidth the capacity of uh, of the cache out in uh, certain locations uh, there's information about latency to really to see uh, the value the, the value uh, there that uh, the cache is able to to provide whether uh, measures like uh, the time to first byte uh, uh, within the server or the RTT, the the, the actual uh, the actual uh, distance or in terms of time uh, that uh, this cache resides, and uh, that at the end of the day has a very uh, big impact on uh, the quality of experience that the uh, end user uh, would uh, uh, would receive, and. Um, 
and there's an ability to really, in some <coughs> cases, we compare these metrics uh, between the items that we are able to deliver locally uh, to items that are uh, brought from the origin uh, when there's a cash uh, a cash miss. So really to see the, the difference in terms of uh, of uh, our ability to uh, deliver uh, in a in a in a in a good way. Um, and and again, this should be measured both in a single cash level and in a whole solution uh, uh, level uh, in order to actually get uh, valuable uh, metrics. So so basically you're saying that you measure both at the individual server level and at, you know, call it the caching layer level where you're looking at all of your caches holistically. Is that is that correct? Correct. And, and you added the word layer and uh, you're correct. May, in many cases, Caches are uh, are in several layers within uh, a certain network, uh, and uh, different layers might have different uh, results and different me metrics or values to these metrics. Okay, um, you know, Eric, what what are, what has been your experience? You know, obviously you've worked at a CDN, you're working at um, you know digital streaming services now. Are there anything? Is there anything special that, that you've used in the past from a metrics perspective to sort of you know, gain more insight to the to the caching effectiveness and efficiency. Um, yeah, there's a couple different ways we we kind of look at things, and and I, I'll kind of break it down into two separate components. The first component is, as Yoav has been talking about, the way a CDN might look at it, cache efficiency. Um, you know, the, whether it be bytes or re request rate, you always want an efficiency in terms of how many uh, individual requests or how many bytes are being served off of the CDN infrastructure versus off of your own origin infrastructure. That gives you a sense of how much of it is actually being stored locally to the end user, and it gives you a better sense of the overall performance you can hopefully expect should the CDN be operating at its its peak kind of efficiency and performance level. Um, you know, one of the things that you think about, you, can, you brought up different layers of caching. That's an area that's also very interesting. We can look at different uh, efficiency ratios, both um, how much of an object is, uh, how many requests are being served directly at the edge, closest to the end user, or maybe even a tier deeper from a parent cache. So still within a caching environment and ecosystem that's not our own um, origins, but not necessarily something that is as efficient as being served completely off the edge of a CDN network. And the reason why I bring those up is those can tend to be good indicators of what might be our end user performance. So it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio, but you can tend to see things um, from an efficiency standpoint, as well as from a, a server throughput standpoint, um, time to first byte, time to last byte, even CPU on a specific server on a, on a, a caching network, um, having a downstream impact upon end users. And so for, for us as a content provider, um, we always look at that end user performance as well, everything from a um, rebuffer ratios to video start failures are just as important to understanding the entire ecosystem as is cache efficiency uh, that we get from our, our distribution partners. Sanjay, do you have anything to, to add there? I mean, did you, have you seen from your perspective, you know, within a, uh, an operator network, sort of different metrics uh, to, to measure cache efficiency? And obviously what Eric was just saying is that, you know, measuring cash is just one part of the bigger picture uh, in terms of you know measuring the effectiveness of a delivery architecture uh sure so i i would i would add from an operator standpoint some of the things we also want to look at is uh, uh how my cash is performing from performing from the ingress point of view and also the egress point of view so i'm also interested in knowing how many bytes i received when i received you know i want to know the time i received how many bytes are received on the ingress side and on the egress side? I would be interested in knowing um, when I serve the content out, how many bytes are served. So I want to know that also. So that's the overall part of the efficiency that I want to measure. Um, obviously, um, everything that uh, uh, Yoav said before, and then uh, such as cache hit, cache miss, those are very important metrics um, for us as well to to be able to know how efficiently our um, caches are working. So I think that's, that's important. And, and that also kind of gives us uh, a way to plan for the network as well. So these metrics are very important 
um, including the, the bytes that we are serving uh, that help us to, to plan for the future and see how we need to grow and where we need to grow. No, that makes, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, obviously. And I think what's interesting from what all three of you guys are, are saying right now is, I mean, this is not a, you know, sort of like I have these three metrics. I can tell efficiency of my caches uh, anywhere. It's, it doesn't seem to be that that's the case. There are lots of components to measuring the effectiveness of a cache. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, not to make a shameless plug for the SVA, but the live streaming working group is working on a best practices to reduce streaming latency um, document right now. And part of that is a discussion about storage, local storage versus network storage versus memory. So it's that obviously the physical characteristics of the server add something to the overall delivery experience uh, or the viewing experience that's going to be a result of the cache within the delivery architecture. So it's it's super, super interesting. And I guess, um, you know, maybe Sanjay, you can you can start us off with this this next question. But that leads me to like, OK, what can you do? Like, you know, are there some tricks of the trade? <laughs> and obviously, you can say, like, I tell you, but I have to kill you. Uh, but hopefully you won't. Hopefully you'll say, like, I've got some some little things you can do, you know, of course, it seems like there's a thousand knobs to turn, but you know, Sanjay, uh, you know, are there some you know sort of configuration settings, uh, you know, some maybe some standard ones that can lead to a more efficient cache that you know you could be willing to share with our uh, with our listeners? Yes, uh, no, that's a very good question, and um, I will say that you know, obviously, there, like you said, there are thousands of knobs you know that are in play here, but but just you know, speaking from from some of the things that one has to be very aware of. I, you know, obviously there are a number of variables here, you know, from a service st service provider standpoint that you have to be aware of. Uh, and then before talking about any specific configuration setting per se, um, there, there's a fundamental concept that you have to be really aware of, and that's really the the power of adaptive bitrate. Um, for example, you know, for a 480p video up to 60 frames per second. Um, one may need to use a bitrate that's between what uh, maybe 1500 uh, to 3000 kilobits per second, or for a full HD video with high frame rate, uh, you know, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Again, you're looking at a bitrate of 4500 to 6000 kilobits per second. So, so I think what what I'm thinking here is that uh, a network provider has to be very aware of the 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 variousness of the bit rates that it, it is that it is handling so how best to handle that so that's on one side of it and so so the fact is you know you have these varying bit rates but more importantly what you have is in your network you have thousands and thousands of concurrent sessions at the same time so i think one of the the key thing for for the the caching server would be what it is doing the most is actually uh, it's spending the time in the lookups because the requests are coming in they're looking for streaming content you know some big, some small, but primarily the, the biggest thing from an operator standpoint is that my cache has to be able to handle these concurrent requests that are coming in and how best to handle it because there's a lot of lookups. So, so I think I would say that uh, one of the key things would be that you have to look at the IOPS. You know, you have to be able to measure performance in terms of the IOPS, which is the, the input output performance per second, right? So that's what you got to be aware of and you've got to be able to to have this performance done well ahead of time and you know how your uh, caches, you know, the, your CPUs are going to be performing, how the IOPS is done. So I would say that that would be one of the big thing that you have to look at um, when you're looking at it because it's not so much that you're moving large data. So, I mean, you care about the throughput, certainly you do, but I think uh, with the thousands of sessions that you have ongoing, uh, IOPS is one of the factors that become important in your consideration. Okay, I mean, so so that would mean basically that you are really making configuration settings at the OS level, or you know, at the at the machine level, not necessarily within the caching software. Um, but there's obviously configuration settings that you can make, you know, for the physical machine uh, in order to optimize, you know, how well it operates in, uh, you know, in responding to requests. Um, you know, Eric and Yoav, what what are your thoughts? You got any, you know, sort of knobs to turn? <laughs> Uh, yeah, too many. Um, yeah, yeah, around storage. Uh, so when Sanjay is correct. Uh, IOPS is, is a major, uh, major issue, and and you need to set up the 
uh, your storage in a way that uh, you'll be able to uh, to receive high bandwidth uh, from the from the storage uh, and uh, in many cases IOPS is uh, the limit so playing around really with different types of storage uh, is is uh, significant uh, different types of flash uh, type storage is, is uh, uh, in the last uh, couple of years are, are making a major difference and uh, obviously uh, uh, storage size if uh, the, the size is too small we're thrashing uh, basically rewriting the storage all the time and not uh, getting a, a good enough efficiency from it um, and and really in addition is a, a cache at the end of the day is located an open cache is located within a network uh, and you need to be able to engineer the network path really whether to the subscriber or to the origin or to the next uh, layer of caches you know to make sure that uh, you're not get, creating a congestion uh, there luckily caches help for uh, reducing congestions in the network so uh, that's uh, that's uh, easier uh, and uh, really obviously monitoring your your systems and make it, making sure that they're uh, using their uh, computer, their CPU, in a, an efficient way, and, and not uh, reaching to their uh, to their limits, as that uh, in, in many cases, if you reach a hundred percent, you're starting to impact the uh, quality of experience, and that is uh, the last thing we want to do. And just to add to what you're saying, JT, you, you know, kind of bringing it down even to the to the base level, so not just looking at the system itself, but looking at the basic things you can do on the content. Um, you know, setting the time to live appropriately is a simple, easy thing to do on any object. Ensuring that you're properly configuring your max age and any specific caching settings you need from uh, from cores-based headers to um, even how you might respond to a head request versus a, a full get request for the body of an object understanding that both on the content side and then on, on the downstream impact to the caching side of things is really important to, to optimize not only for myself as a content provider but also how my partners in the content delivery space and the networking space get impacted by the delivery so it's really it's a connected ecosystem and and even the small things that you do from setting your ttls can have a large cascading impact throughout the system you know, that's funny. I was I was actually just going to ask that question. <laughs> so, so it's great that you that you sort of beat me to the punch. But it was, you know, kind of something that that Sanjay said and then you reiterated was that, you know, obviously the content itself has an impact on, you know, the way the cache is configured. Um, and so that's obviously very interesting, too. It's another another knob to turn. Um, and obviously there are, you know, lots of configuration changes you can make in terms of packaging, right? So, you know, how big are your segments, you know, all sorts of stuff like that, that, you know, clearly then will impact um, different things in the cache, like what Yoav said in terms of thrashing the storage. And, you know, if you've got billions of little objects in small storage, you're gonna be not very efficient. So it's it's all, that's all super, super interesting, um, you know, from the sort of cache server perspective, there's a lot of configuration uh, that can happen. And in some ways it's, I guess it's a little magic, a little black box, uh, you know, you kind of figure these things out, uh, you know, trial and error. But I wanna, I kinda wanna take it up a level, um, and, and Yoav, you know, maybe you can start us off here with this one, but, you know, obviously the, the caching server is within a network. Um, so it's within a larger delivery infrastructure. And you guys have already talked a little bit about round trip times. And so, you know, things like DNS, you know, they, they play a role in how effective or efficient delivery is, um, you know, from, from the cache to the end user. But, you know, people are requesting content across all kinds of different networks, mobile networks, Wi-Fi networks, you know, fixed networks. Um, you know, Yoav, is you know, does does a caching strategy change? You know, in terms of how you build or configure your caches um, across different kinds of networks. And so yes, yes, it does. And and really, we see caching when in different, really different types of uh, network, whether big telcos, mobile. Uh, cable networks and, and really see and uh, there's a difference there and there's even a difference in terms of a different 
service provider would have their own uh, preferences or, or uh, limitations that require uh, whether certain uh, insertion points. Uh, obviously, in uh, open caching is designed to be uh, as far as possible in the edge, but uh, it can reside in a more aggregation or core uh, level as well. Really depends on uh, the preferences and, and limitations within uh, this network. Um, the, uh, so I, I referred earlier really to uh, layering. So if uh, possible, we'll always attempt to create uh, some type of layering of caches within the network where they have edge caches really deep in the edge and more uh, in another uh, mid-level layer and more in the aggregation of core uh, layers. Uh, so that's uh, one type of uh, strategy. Uh, in some cases, this uh, is not uh, is not possible. Um, and uh, and uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure, whether there's uh, there's now uh, the 5G mech uh, and in general mech uh, environments, uh, the mobile uh, uh, mobile multi-axis edge compute. Uh, there. The installations are usually a virtual or a containerized uh, environments. Uh, where in, in other cases, the preference is really to put servers, bare metal servers, uh, in the network. So it's slightly different uh, approach in each one uh, of these cases. Um, and as part of it, you need to really design the amount of storage you have in each one of uh, the location. Uh, each one of the locations understand what are, what would be the capacity uh, needs in each one of the locations and uh, accordingly uh, install uh, your uh, your software or, or in, in hardware um, and uh, in addition there, there might be really again different types of content uh, uh, that uh, that you might build the, the, your uh, solution for, uh, for instance, live content might uh, receive si uh, somewhat uh, a, a different approach uh, compared to uh, VOD or software downloads. So uh, you need to understand what is the type of content that you're uh, planning to work on, what is the bl perhaps the blend between the different types of content, and uh, build your caching solutions accordingly. Now that makes a lot of sense, and and actually, I'll just I'll sort of build on this whole question. You know, obviously, right? We've got Verizon here. Uh, lots of people <laughs> are streaming over mobile networks. So, in terms of what uh, Yoav just talked about, sort of this, you know, different network, different approach for caching. You know, Sanjay, can you address a little bit about, you know, maybe what are some of the caching strategies for delivery or using caches within a mobile network? Um, sure, and um, I'm just going to go back really a quick second here for Yoav's answer there. And I, I just wanted to say that when I when I heard Yoav say what he just said, um, I, I couldn't help but say that you know that uh, he's speaking with a lot of experience there, because I was smiling as, as to the things that he was he was talking about. Um, everything he said about um, you know really applies to any any operator. I think so. Everything that he said, you know. You, you, that well, it, the the service varies among, amongst the operators, but I think the core things that he said that you've got to have a strategy where you might be deploying um, into the core of the network, or you know, in a mid-tier or maybe distributed um, virtual containerized, you know, bare metal live, you know, how do you handle the live content? So all of those things actually matter, and all of those things um, were important. Um, but uh, so so I I. I've, Fully agree with with you, um, and I can I can tell that he's speaking with experience there. Um, so the, um, the the question on on mobile network, um, a lot of what you all say is actually applies, um, but but the the uh, the question is that is there any uh, special needs within the uh, mobile network? I I will say that the short answer is no, um, really because. The the answer largely will depend on where you place the cache in the mobile network. I think that is very important. So, um, for some of the decisions you know that you have to make is that 
is this something you're going to tie with uh, mobile edge computing, or this is something you know, you're know you looking at caching as a general purpose solution? So, uh, so mobile edge computing is completely different than uh, the general purpose caching, and if, if that's your intent, um, then I don't see any impact to the mobile caching, you know, the, the mobile uh, network, uh, because uh, if you deploy something that is more general purpose, you're not deploying it in a way that uh, takes away uh, your uh, mobile network resources. And that, that's very important because you want to have the ability to keep the mobile network as independent of your caches as you can. And you don't want to take away those precious little resources because if you look at it, the spectrum is actually shared across all, all the users where it is uh, serving. So you really cannot take away those resources to then you know, use those to serve the, the, the handful of users. So it, it really is important where you place your caches. So if you, if you look at the mobile network and if you're looking at the packet gateway, and if you're deploying your uh, uh, caching solution north of the packet gateway, so all you're really doing is that you're bringing the, the internet closer to the user without really chewing up on any of the radio access network resources, and that's important. So I think really the, 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 the answer really here is that when you're defining uh, caching or deploying caching in the mobile network, you don't really have to tune anything on, on your radio resources in order to deliver the content. No, that makes sense, and, that, and that's really interesting, and it's actually, you know, to, to sort of follow on with that, you know, the, the streaming video alliance, you know, within the open caching group does have an edge caching subgroup. So it's obviously there, you know, we're looking at sort of how do you extend caching out into, you know, the very, very edge of the network, like, you know, in the home, along with the, the gateway router, or, you know, along with the set top box, how can there be storage there? So that's, that's, that's very interesting. Um, and I kind of want to turn to Eric, um, you know, for this next question, you know, because obviously we're talking about sort of caching and we've mentioned before, you guys have talked before about caching, you know, you're using caching providers, um, you know, caches are part of a larger connected ecosystem. Um, and so let me give you an example of like, I'm an OTT operator, I have an origin, multiple origins, redundant, um, you know, they may be situated on a caching server, like an Nginx instance. Um, I have multiple CDN partnerships, so I'm, I'm using, let's say like three or four CDNs to deliver my content. That content is going through an operator network, which may have edge caches as well. And then like what we talked about, there may be, you know, sort of edge caching in the home even, or on the device or at the cell tower. Um, so, you know, Eric, you know, what are some of the strategies um, that can be used to manage caches across multiple networks, right? So if this is the common use case where uh, content delivery is done via multiple caches in multiple networks, like how, how, you know, like for example, like how can a video distributor purge objects across, you know, caches in different CDNs? What are, what are some of the strategies there? Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of take the first part of management and then talk about uh, purging and, and kind of the operational flow that you would do um, after. Um, you know, on the management side, there's there's a lot of different factors that you have to take into account. Everything from the capacity availability on a specific um, ISP CDM partnership. So kind of how an ASN uh, autonomous system network might be uh, set up in such a way with specific caches both on network uh, with their own edges as well as with CDN partners kind of uh, one level back from them. Um, and even all the way back to, you know, how they pick up content from your origins and, and how you're able to satisfy all the requests throughout the ecosystem. There's kind of a sensitivity that you need to understand not only the capacity, but also the request rate, the cache efficiency rate, um, and then all the way down to the QoS metrics that we talked about before uh, on the client side. What are the your customers seeing in terms of rebuffer and in terms of uh, video start failures and video play failures? Um, really, you have to take a, a view of the entire ecosystem. You can't just snapshot at individual points um, and say that they're they're not connected because it is such a um, such a sinuous environment where each and every component kind of touches the next component and the awareness that you need for each aspect of it can't be looked at separately other than for potentially debugging once you've identified that there might be an issue within that entire ecosystem. Um, you know, one of the ways you mentioned that uh, one of the use cases you mentioned around purging, 
you know, right now it's a challenge. Uh, it, it quite frankly is a challenge. You, you have to manage different systems differently. Each and every CDN, each ISP with their own CDNs, they might have different APIs, different environments that you're leveraging to purge requests. You could build your own interfaces um, and, and build a kind of single point where you might, might be able to issue a purge that then goes out to other environments. There are some commercial solutions that also provide that, but, um, you know, there are standards and there's there's approaches towards standards. One of the things we're working on within the Open Caching Working Group is looking at both those um, components of uh, workflow standardization and configuration standardization, as well as capacity insights in, uh, for, for a richer insight into the entire ecosystem, as well as footprint insights into the ecosystem, and trying to figure out ways to improve interoperability. You know, traditionally within the Open Caching Working Group, not to, to go too deep into what we've done, but traditionally we, we've we done a focus on the entire ecosystem and how you might structure uh, functionally your own open caches. Uh, but the latest kind of push of the group is how can we find interoperability components that anyone that's in the caching ecosystem can use to help fulfill their their challenges from a workflow environment. So myself as a content provider might be able to create a purge that touches all of our different CDN providers because they're using this standardized API. And in turn, that those CDNs can go ahead and talk to all the different open caches because they're using that standardized API. And it's one call to, to kind of solve it all. That's the goal, that's the hope, but uh, you know, it's certainly something we're working on. We have some great traction with, and you know, with the start of, of some of the work like Viasat have done, you know, it's certainly a, uh, it's closer to a reality than, than, than not these days. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. Really, really quickly. Um, hey, everybody, if uh, if you have questions, uh, don't forget we do have a question panel. Um, just go ahead and ask what you uh, what you want to, the panelists to address, and I'll you know I'll get it uh, I'll get it asked uh, near the end. Um, Sanjay or or Yoav, do you guys have anything to to add to that? You know, sort of strategies to dealing with management uh, of caches across multiple networks. Um, so on, on the purging side, I will, I will add that um, the Open Caching Working Group is also defining uh, standards-based interface to uh, within the IETF. Uh, there's a proposal out there to be able to um, use standards-based um, mechanism for, for purging content because, as Eric was pointing out, that uh, each environment from a content provider standpoint may be different, uh, and they'll have, they have to today deal with a specific environment and how they can manage if is there even an automated way to purge to issue a request to purge and, and such so we, we are focusing on on trying to standardize uh, an operation that will allow uh, for content for pre-positioning of the content for example or or purging of the content so some of those things if, if they become standardized then it, it makes a lot more easier for a content provider to be able to manage uh, content across their various distribution channels. Cool, you have anything to add? No, all okay, is great. correct. <laughs> oh, that's always good to hear. Um, all right, so let, you know, let's, let's move on to um, a little bit about sort of how, as an industry, we can address um, these challenges, right? It's not, a, you know, I, I don't wanna say it's a problem, right? But managing caches, across multiple networks is difficult like eric pointed out you know and and you know sanjay pointed out that obviously you know we're you know the sva is trying to coordinate with other groups in order to bring standardization to to the interoperability which is great um but obviously you know the there are like kind of what we said way at the beginning there are tons of different caching server options um and they obviously all operate you know in their own way um and so having even having interoperability amongst all of uh, the, the CDN and service providers and network operators and caches and, and all that stuff is great. We still have this problem with, you know, sort of uh, just call it variance, right, between all the different caching software. So one of the things the SVA is trying to do to address that is this concept of open caching. Um, and it's kind of like twofold, right? It's not only, hey, here's an here's a way to sort of build a cache that, you know, kind of operates the same across every network, but then here's also a way to, you know, sort of bolt in, um, you know, interoperability between these other caches and something that might be open caching. And so what I wanted to kind of do was, was have you guys talk a little bit about, um, you know, about open caching on kind of three different fronts. One is, 
you know, where is the group at today? What's it doing? Uh, the second is kind of this vision, like what what do you guys see the group doing? And then the third is, you know, Sanjay, you kind of touched on it a little bit. I would love for you to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the sort of open caching to CDNI uh, work that you've been really spearheading uh, for the SVA. So let, let's let's start first with kind of where we're at now. And, and maybe Yoav, can, can you give us a sense of, you know, kind of what is the state of open caching? You know, what specs are being developed? What are you guys uh, working on? Yes, so so as uh, Eric for the uh, earlier, we really attempted to define the different uh, uh, area, the, the main areas of uh, of uh, open caching, uh, whether it's uh, delegation and routing uh, methods, and uh, uh, the how do you expose the footprint to the uh, from the open caching uh, system to um, to a CDN. How do you provision, or basically, what is the metadata that you need to uh, push into the open uh, caching system uh, in order to have it understand uh, the different uh, services that uh, it needs to, de to deliver? Uh, items around content management, you referred to uh, purging uh, as an example. Uh, URL tokenization, which is uh, widely used uh, in order to protect the content and uh, uh, so we have defined how uh, does that need uh, how, how how does that work? We handle the uh, the definitions of uh, quality of uh, service uh, of of the caching uh, solutions. And for instance, uh, at the moment, one of the uh, main topics that we're discussing is uh, capacity insight, basically exposing uh, or sharing capacity information from the open caching solution to uh, the upstream uh, CDN in order so the CDN can uh, take uh, better better decisions and uh, in general our our specs are aiming really to define uh, how uh, the ecosystem needs uh, or how the architecture needs uh, to work and what are the different parameters that needs uh, to uh, to be passed to between different uh, uh, entities, uh, but we did not focus on really defining a, a deep standard. But rather, uh, in some cases, we uh, we used CDNI as something to lean on, and uh, where we need to update it, as Sanjay referred, we uh, were pushing uh, updates into CDNI, and uh, now one of the uh, main uh, areas of focus. Is really this uh, labs initiatives uh, within the uh, CDNA, uh, sorry, uh, within the SVA, where we're uh, attempting to define APIs, uh, cr uh, clear programmable APIs uh, that will implement uh, these uh, these specs and will allow this standardization that Eric uh, referred to uh, between the different uh, components. So we have. Uh, different uh, open caching solutions providing uh, the same API or at least a similar API that uh, will allow easier way to uh, push uh, uh, updates into them and receive information from them. Uh, so this is uh, this uh, labs initiative is, is currently our uh, main uh, focus within the uh, open caching working group. No, that's great, and and you know that was a fantastic explanation of kind of you know where the group's at right now and and what you guys are working on. Um, you know a little bit. So let's you know Eric, if you can you know sort of address this uh, the next part, which is that vision part. Um, and obviously Yoav and, and Sanjay, you know, jump in, um, you know, to add uh, to to what Eric's going to say. But I kind of want to you know. Eric, if you can help us understand, like what what is the vision for open caching? Um, you know, what's the what's the ultimate goal that you guys are trying to accomplish within the group? Yeah, I think there's there's two main goals. One, um, the proliferation of open caches. We have a lot of different networks that already cache content today that that just might be doing it a different way, and we we really want to propose that when it comes to video delivery and it comes to video caching, a bunch of us who are experts have come together and proposed a best practice approach. Now, we're not, we're not saying that here's all the standards without the work of the ITF. As Sanjay has mentioned, we partner with 
uh, and leverage uh, the specs from CDNI Working Group, uh, which is an industry standard CDNI uh, interface specification, but um, ways that we can make it video specific. And we really want to get that out there and continue to help that proliferate. Um, the Viasat implementation that you mentioned at the top of the, the webinar has been a great kind of example of how that's taking hold and how that's continuing to grow. But but I think there's also a recognition that, uh, particularly within the group, and, and you have talked on it, I, I mentioned it before, particularly within the group, there's this recognition that we can't change every um, potential caching environment that might already be out there. But what we can ask for is interoperability, and we can ask for standards that go towards CDNI, that leverage CDNI, and can work back into CDNI with video-specific use cases in, in, in mind. And so I, I think that's kind of where not we're not moving the group, but where the group is now focusing. Uh, it's towards these standards, it's towards these approaches that make it easier for open caches or even a CDN that might have, I'm sorry, an internet service provider that might have deployed their own CDN, a way for them to potentially talk back to an upstream commercial CDN in a standard manner without having to completely re-architect their entire network for, for the open caching approach we recommend. It's one of many ways to go about solving the problem, but hey, if you, if you don't want to do that, at least we can standardize on how you talk to each other. And, and I think that's the key for us right now is, is to continue that proliferation, continue that growth, um, continue getting those caches out there. You know, I would say from my standpoint as a content provider, the more um, similar a caching infrastructure is and a caching ecosystem is, the easier it is for me to understand how things are are being routed, how things are occurring, where objects are being cached, and in turn, where there are challenges for customers, be much much uh, swifter in being able to root out the costs. And so my goal is ultimately to, to hope that more and more um, ecosystems pick up this approach because it standardizes and simplifies our workflow and it makes our customers uh, experience, you know, even if it's challenged, it, it makes us be able to solve their problems a lot quicker. Um, Ultimately, it's about that end user experience, and we really want to to make it so that that's always as pristine as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to standardize as much of the infrastructure and and the architecture and approaches as possible. So that's our goal. Uh, at least that's my approach on the goal, right? It, it's it's standardization, it's best practices, it's um, n if not complete homogeneity to the to the ecosystem. Um, at the very least, a uh, a common ground communication approach. Um, I don't know if, if you all or Sanjay, you had anything to add to that. Yeah, so I think I think and, Eric. Uh, sorry, um, you 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 have uh, you have you know uh, stated very well. So the only thing I will say is that the interoperability, as you said, you know, uh, is important. So uh, definitely, um, I think what you said makes sense. Yeah, so I, I would like to add that really the uh, open caching is uh, at the end of the day uh, came from the the common vision of the the SVA founders really that, uh, that there's a need for an architecture that uh, uh, would fit the the uh, modern and and future needs of uh, video uh, video streaming. And uh, really to create this architecture and uh, really a business model uh, that uh, really works uh, uh, better and, so, and is sustainable uh, for uh, the future of streaming. And uh, and really as such, uh, we created it, started to really define the different uh, specs. And I'm I really believe that there's a, a way to go and where and, and we'll have a more and more. Uh, whether existing solution adapt to uh, to uh, this approach or or, or uh, new solutions uh, go there and and uh, we will for sure find things that we, we need to deal with and we and we need to improve within uh, within this and really as, as as part of it I think that uh, it's not the fact that uh, more and more uh, operators and uh, 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 the CDN or open and open caching solutions uh, are finding that this approach is uh, is good. Uh, that's why we really are starting to really discuss uh, deeper this operability 
uh, issue and, and really uh, seeing how uh, we can expand that. And I'm sure that we'll have a very more, uh, very um, interesting uh, challenges ahead uh, really to optimize this, uh, this solution as we go, uh, go forward. No, that, that's great. I mean, that's, that's a fantastic explanation of sort of how you guys see the group shaping, you know, and especially moving into the future. Um, I think that's, you know, that's a, that's a, a really great vision to have. Um, you know, the last thing I wanted to touch on in terms of open caching was something, you know, Sanjay, that you mentioned a little bit about and something that Yoav touched on as well, which is the integration um, or, or the collaboration with CDNI. Can you, can you just sort of touch on, you know, Sanjay, sort of where that's at now and, and what we've done and what you want to do um, in the future? Uh, of course. Um, and, if, yeah, and this is my favorite topic. Um, so the uh, we've we have mentioned CDNI a few times. So let me let me just um, for the benefit of everyone uh, define that. Uh, so that stands for Content Delivery in Networks Interconnection, uh, and this is a working group within the IETF. Um, and Content Delivery Networks obviously are the, the CDNs, uh, commercial CDNs uh, that are out there. So the the CDNI working group was primarily established by by the CDNs um, with with the with the with the goal of uh, trying to have uh, defining a standards based interconnection between the between these independent commercial CDNs. So, for example, uh, a CDN may not have a presence in some geographic location, but now have a need to deliver content to customers in that area uh, where they currently do not have any presence. So, this interconnection that has been defined. The standards that have been defined within the CDNI working group um, was intended to allow, uh, say, a CDN that wants to delegate content to another CDN. So they called the delegating CDN as, a, as an upstream CDN and a receiving CDN, CDN as a downstream CDN. And the interconnection standards were defined so that uh, a CDNs that have nothing, uh, these are completely independent CDNs, but over the, the standard interface, they can delegate content uh, from an upstream CDN to a downstream CDN, um, and that will allow them to serve their customers where, A, they don't have the presence, um, uh, and they don't plan to have a presence there, but this, uh, this arrangement allows for them to be able to serve their content, uh, and obviously, for the downstream CDN, uh, it, it gives an added uh, revenue, which didn't exist before. So, so there, there's a good, good um, mutual give and take here um, uh, in that way. Um, so, so now the open caching working group really is based on the, the same CDNI concept where you have the upstream CDN and you have a downstream CDN and there's this standard interface that allows them to connect. So in, in really in, in the open caching working group, you can, you can think of a CDN or a content publisher as an upstream to a caching platform, the open caching platform, which is downstream, uh, to either the CDN or the uh, or the content provider, so we are really leveraging the same set of RFCs that the CDN had developed. Uh, same concept really applies to us as well. Um, so I think there's a, there's a good benefit for us. And um, so what we have done is, um, as we stated earlier, that we have um, uh, leveraged those existing RFCs in order to define um, and especially adapt them for the video delivery. And not only that, uh, besides the adoption, we have also, we have also realized that, uh, that these RFCs were not really fully catering to the, to the video environment. Um, so we have also uh, made enhancements to the existing RFCs and have submitted um, draft within the CDNI working group that addresses some of the shortcomings that were not considered earlier, um, such as, uh, as Eric was pointing out, uh, or uh, Yoav was pointing out actually that um, uh, the the footprint advertisement. So we have, we've added uh, additional capabilities where content publisher can receive uh, CDNI uh, can receive the footprint information from the uh, ISPs. So it has a better sense of um, where to delegate content to. So so those are some of the contributions that we have made back into the uh, into the IETF um, and. Hopefully that will be standardized, and then that will allow uh, adopters to be able to, you know, really take that and make the standard as open as as it can be, 
to allow for better interoperability. Um, we're also working on additional things within the CDNI working group that will allow us to to um, to do other things such as some of the other challenges that Eric was talking about. You know, how do you manage your content uh, across these disparate set of uh, CDNs? Um, how do you issue one one purge command to all and then everybody does the same thing so you know that everything is getting done? So those are some of the things that we need to work on within the IETF to standardize uh, standardize functions based on uh, managing your content. So, so that really is, you know, so, so there's really a very close relationship between um, what we are doing within the open caching working group uh, using the existing standards. And then again, um, as we put them to practice, we're also realizing that, oh, they need some enhancements, you know, here and there. So, so there are a lot of things that we are doing now within the working group, um, uh, including the capacity insight. Maybe some of that work goes back into the IETF. Uh, and really, the goal will be to to make those as a standards, so that anybody that needs to uh, to come in, it's very easy for them to be able to uh, take the standards and then adopt to it. So, so it makes it much more uh, easier and cleaner way to interface. Oh, that's fantastic! Thank you for that, Sanjay. I mean, that's obviously you know the having organizations work together for a common goal is important. Um, you know, everyone going out there and sort of doing their own thing. You know, doesn't help the industry improve. So it's it's awesome to hear how well you know you know you're spearheading you know open caching and and CD and I really working together. Um, we've got a couple minutes left, and so I do have a really cool question that came in, uh, and I want to put it out there. I, it may be more involved than we have time for. Um, so just if that's the case, uh, let me know. You know, give a little answer. Let me know that, it, and then I'll connect you to the person who asked it so that, you know, so that one of you guys or all three of you guys can can weigh in. But the question really is, is, um, you know, this person was really interested in how would an OTT service leverage open caching in day-to-day -day operations? So for example, would the network operator provide an API that can announce caching availability in network along with request to fill? You know, is it first come first serve? Um, and then I asked a little bit about sort of business rules contracts, but you know, obviously the, um, I don't want to put you guys on the spot for uh, you know for talking non-technical stuff, so maybe that can be taken offline. So I'll just throw it out there. Can can somebody sort of uh, uh, try and address this? Maybe Eric or Yoav or Sanjay. Just you know, let's let's go with Eric first. How about that? <laughs> sure. So you know, a, as a content provider interfacing with open caching networks, um, kind of becomes the nature of of who your relationships with. Is it particularly with the the provider of the open cache network and internet service provider who might deploy these caches with inside their network, or is your relationship with a CDN who happens to be partnering um, with this open cache network for deeper integration and deeper embedding within the network? Um, you know that really dictates how and uh, how you might approach setting things up and configuring things. If it's through a CDN. Uh, a majority of the work based on the specifications, and we have some specifications around things like request routing, um, where a majority of the work in that scenario might begin and end with just setting up the CDN in a specific way. And then it's up to them to integrate upstream, or rather further downstream to the open caching network. That means gathering the logs from the open caching network, um, integrating with their PERT APIs, um, working on the standardization of, from a tokenization standpoint, um, as well as getting that capacity insights that, that we've kind of mentioned. If you're working directly with uh, an internet service, as a content provider, if you then are actually working directly with an internet service provider, um, there's a whole suite of APIs that you can inter interface with today to, to kind of engage with them directly, but you also need to, in, in many ways, be prepared to deal with an increased load to your origin that you might not normally have from a standard CDN, um, you need to be prepared to deal a bit more with some of the request routing choices and decisioning, um, understanding where your customers are against a specific network and where that caching environment is, the footprint API that we've talked about that, that we have within the group. Um, and, th and then in addition, you really have to, to be prepared to do a lot more deeper integration, uh, understand the whole environment uh, uh, and the whole workflow um, and where it all goes together um, from a, a day in and day out standpoint so that you also know who's managing that network. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a weird challenge that, you know, as content providers, we have these choices. We, we have the opportunity to work with a CDN directly, but there are some times where there are internet service providers that have already deployed their own open cache based network and they might come to us and say, hey, here's an environment that you can do. Um, 
it is a unique scenario. It is a it's a scenario with different options. And I, I think, you know, to your point, the the question came in with business terms, like that tends to dictate the direction that a company might go. Um, but it's not something that we really get involved in within the working group. Uh, it's a company by company decision and basis. Great. Great. All right, guys, we are out of time. So I just want to say thank you to our panelists. You guys were awesome. Uh, that was a really fantastic discussion. And again, I'll have this posted up onto the website, hopefully later today. So everyone, uh, all of the, the attendees, thank you so much for taking time to listen to this. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.